Apple wants to cancel the iPhone 15, but they can't. At least not yet. Apple is rumored to be right now working on a ton of top secret and very ambitious products. We're talking folding iPhones, touchscreen Macs, and of course, more AR, VR, vision headsets. But the only way they can pay for all of that is with this. Without the iPhone, Apple could crumble but that's not gonna stop them from trying to cancel it. So in this video, I'm breaking down Apple's secret plan to cancel the iPhone. Let me tell you why the iPhone's days are numbered, why they so desperately want to get rid of the iPhone, and why, if Tim Cook has his way, you might just be forced to switch to Android. This is iPhone 13 Pro. When a moment like this happens at an Apple event, it's very easy to forget that it was literally years in the making. Obviously, I don't have to tell you that Apple is known for being extremely controlling and obsessive over every single product they make, and they're known for moving very slowly. They're usually never the first to do something, but when they do it, they usually do it right and better than the competition. This is because behind the scenes, Apple is hard at work at perfecting their formula, their crossing T's, their dotting I's. They're not in the business of sort of experimenting with products, but they're perfecting the formula to make a winning product that is without a doubt going to succeed iMac, iPod, iPhone, iPad, these were not just lucky breaks that Apple had, but an insane amount of time, money, and planning went into them to make them be hit products. Okay, but what does that have to do with canceling the iPhone? If Apple is making hit products and everything's sort of dandy and going great, why would they want to cancel one of their most popular devices of all time? And of course, Apple, uh, we do officially now have for the first time since January 22, a market cap above $3 trillion. That's a nice 1% gain. Apple today is now worth about $3 trillion, making them one of the most wealthy and successful companies on the planet. And if we look at how Apple makes its money, it's clear as to why the iPhone is so important. As of 2022, well over half of the money that Apple makes each year directly comes from the iPhone. This is a product that keeps the lights on, it keeps paying the bills, and most importantly, the iPhone helps Apple pay for them to experiment and build new services and products and gives them the opportunity to afford to fail. And obviously the iPhone has brought Apple a ton of success. It's one of their biggest products of all time but even Apple understands that that success is not gonna last forever and the iPhone's days are numbered. iPhone adoption is already slowing down and when you've got fierce competition from the Android side of things and the sheer fact that people just don't upgrade their phones like they used to every single year, it's sort of easy to understand why the iPhone's gravy train is gonna start to come home to the station. Was that a kind of a weird analogy? Hopefully that made sense. And in response to the gravy train ending, Apple is doing two big things right now. One is they're actively working on the iPhone successor, the product that will replace the iPhone as their main moneymaker, and also begin to diversify their income so they're not so reliant on one single product. And now, since Apple's Vision Pro headset is official, we no longer need to guess as to what the iPhone successor will be because we know what it's gonna be. It's Apple Vision Pro. Apple has touted this as sort of the next generation of computing. They're really positioning this as their next big product, and by all metrics and all accounts and all the reports we've heard, this is what Apple plans to replace the iPhone with. It's gonna be Apple Vision Pro. It's packed with tech. It can do a lot of amazing things. It sounds great and sounds amazing, but that transition from iPhone to headset is not gonna be a simple one. Apple's headset isn't even out yet, but it's already facing three big problems, with the first one, and one of the biggest, being that price tag. Starting at $34.99 is a very steep price tag to try to sell. Apple's gonna get those early adopters in, of course, but like the general public, it's sort of a hard bargain. It's already sort of hard enough to spend a thousand-ish dollars on an iPhone, to spend more than triple that on this headset that you've gotta wear, and you've gotta learn what it does, and understand, and learn its quirks and features. 
it's a hard bargain to try to sell to the average person. The second issue that Apple's currently facing is the complexity to even build this thing. Not only is Apple Vision Pro expensive for us to buy, but it's also really expensive for Apple to make. Reports are coming out now that internally, Apple always knew this headset would be complicated and expensive to build, but over the last few months, we've progressively seen Apple's target sales numbers continue to shrink due to more and more production issues. Initially, the first year Apple was hoping to sell three to four million Vision Pros, then that number went down to around a million was their goal. And now, currently, Apple's targeting 400 to 500,000 headsets sold to be sort of their best case scenario for year one. And to give some context, in the first year the iPhone was on sale, it sold 10 million units. For the iPad in its first year, Apple sold 15 million of those. Even at Apple's best, most ambitious guess here, about 500,000 Vision Pros is just a fraction of the iPhone and iPad sales for their very first year. I think price definitely plays a factor in that, but also comes the third issue with Vision Pro, and that is the ergonomics and exactly what this product is. The iPhone and iPad, as cutting edge and revolutionary as they were, were very easy to understand. Those form factors were definitely more recognizable and familiar. Vision Pro is obviously packed with a ton of amazing technology inside, but you've not only got to pay a lot of money to get it, but you've got to put it on your head. You sort of look a little strange. It only has two hours of battery life. It's a whole new thing to learn. As amazing as it is, there's a lot more friction than picking up an iPhone or using the iPad's tablet form factor, paying 3,500 bucks, putting this on your head and having to learn how to navigate all these new things just makes Vision Pro an even more tough sell for the average person. But despite these challenges, Apple is moving full speed ahead. They want Vision Pro to be their next big thing. They want it to be successful. But what they understand right now is that in order for Vision Pro to be the next generation of computing and usher in the spatial computing era, they've got to continue to make the iPhone and not just make it, but make it successful. They've got to make the iPhone 15 compete with the latest and greatest that Android phones have to offer. They've got to make the iPhone a compelling package because they are so reliant on iPhone sales and the ecosystem the iPhone has made. They need the iPhone right now more than ever. They need it to be successful because they've got to use that iPhone money to subsidize these new endeavors. They've got to use the iPhone to pay for R&D and production and marketing and research of Vision Pro. Eventually, the goal for Apple, the ultimate goal here, is that Vision Pro comes down in price, people love it, average consumers want to buy it, the form factor becomes acceptable, and that is the next generation, and they can sort of make their money from there. But until then, Apple's still relying on this, and they've got to make the iPhone a winner in order to pay for what is right now just sort of an ambitious experiment. And if Apple's master plan does go according to plan, and if they can do this right, they will position themselves as sort of the leader in this next generation of technology. They will be at the forefront of this mixed reality revolution. They'll be able to do some amazing things. And once the form factor can move from a headset into glasses and the technology becomes a lot more uh, accessible and inexpensive, Apple's gonna be in a really great position. But in order to get there, and in order to kill the iPhone, they've got to save it and make it better than it's ever been before. And I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on Apple's lofty and ambitious goals to replace the iPhone with a headset? Do you think Vision Pro is going to live up to the hype? Do you think Apple is doing enough to diversify their income stream by uh, bolstering services and building new products? Or do you think Apple's plan is destined to fail and the iPhone is gonna stay around forever and Vision Pro is gonna flop? Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm curious we can discuss if Apple can really pull off this plan and kill the iPhone or not. It's gonna be very interesting to see. Let's uh, discuss in the comments down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle and I'll see you all in the next one.